Snap Judgment Studios. You're about to hear stories from the Luminary Original Podcast Spooked. To get more as they release, subscribe to the Luminary channel on Apple Podcasts or directly on Luminary. Attention shoppers, we now have Taste in the Bread Aisle, Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that's no longer a sedative for your taste buds. Dave's Killer Bread is on a mission to make the most of the loaf, to rid the world of GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. Killer taste, killer texture, always organic. Dave's Killer Bread. Bread Amplified. Odoo is the most popular open source ERP for many reasons. It's affordable, easy to use. However, most companies rely on Odoo because their applications are fully integrated. But wait, what does fully integrated mean? Imagine a mechanic. They don't waste time running around a shop looking for tools. They keep everything they need in one convenient toolbox. Odoo is just like that. But instead of a hammer or a wrench, you get applications for every aspect of your company. They're always connected and communicating with each other, letting you stay up to date at all times. For a free trial, visit odoo.com slash snap. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash snap. Oh, you're listening to Snap Judgment's All Hallowed Eve special featuring stories from our sister podcast, Spooked, a luminary original. My name is Glenn Washington. Now, you're going to hear from Mary Myers, a young mother in Beaumont, Texas, and Mary. Mary's just designed a dress for her daughter, Morgan, to wear in a beauty pageant. And Mary wants everyone to see it. Spooked. It was a really pretty peach colored dress. It was high in the front, low in the back, with like a lace petticoat that showed from the front. It was a beautiful dress. After the pageant, I didn't want to just hang it in a closet. I was super proud of it. I wanted everyone that came over to see this beautiful dress that that I designed. So I wanted to go and find, like, a a toddler-sized doll about the size of my daughter to put it on. It would be the perfect way to display the dress. Then I remembered the antique store that was close to my house. This antique store, it it wasn't your typical store. It was an old wooden framed house, very rickety, kind of a gray color. The people in there, it looked like an older gentleman and his wife and their daughter. And when I walk in, everyone is greeting me at the front and asking me if if they can help me, if there's anything I need. There was antiques from, from wall to wall, floor to ceiling, old chairs, old lamps, china, silverware, anything you could imagine. This store had it in there. So I asked the one lady if they had the doll that I was looking for, and she said, let me go get my mom. So when her mom came up, she said that they didn't have one there at the store, but that she had one in her house that she could bring if I wanted it. So I said, absolutely, of course. So a few days later, I go back to the store to pick up the doll. The whole vibe was different. The man just kind of saw me at the door, and and he didn't really even greet me. He just took me to the back, and it just felt odd that they would take me all the way to the back of the store where normally customers aren't allowed to go. The two ladies are in this back room, and they just point over to where the doll is. They didn't want really to talk to me too much or, or really to have much to do with me at all. They just kind of nodded with their head that she was over there. So I look over to the right, and and there's this old, beat-up doll. She's about three feet tall, no clothes on her. Poor little thing was just laying there naked with her her face all scuffed up. She's worn out and faded, and someone had cut her hair. In, In places, there wasn't even any hair. It was just the holes where the hair goes. 
but the size of the doll was perfect. And I knew that even though she looked pitiful and sad, I knew that I could work with her and I could make her pretty. So I buy the doll. I put her in my car and I immediately start talking to this doll, telling her that I was so happy she was mine now. I was going to take her home and and get her cleaned up. This isn't something I normally do. I don't talk to, to dolls and toys, but I feel sad for the doll just because she's so, she's so beat up. So we get home. I run a bath for her just like I would my daughter. I'm excited because she's cleaning up really nice. The scuffs are coming off her face. The more that I clean, the better she looks. Maybe it's just me, but I think her eyes are lighting up. I dry her off and I stand her up in front of me and I put a little lipstick on my finger and rub it on her lips just to give her a little color. Draw a little eyeliner just so her eyes will brighten up. Put a little rouge on her cheeks so that her cheeks are flush. And then I found an old costume wig that I had, a little black wig that you would wear for Halloween. I put it on her, and she just looks so pretty. And then I get the dress, the beautiful dress. I put the dress on her, and the dress is a perfect fit. And then I take her to my daughter Morgan's room and stand her up in the corner of her room, fluff the dress out, make sure she's looking beautiful. So then when my daughter and her dad come home a little later, I tell them I have a surprise for them. I'm so excited. So I take them to Morgan's room and I show them the doll with the dress. And they both just stare at the doll and they both go, no. Morgan, you could just tell by her eyes, the way she was just staring at the doll, that she was afraid of that doll. She had a a look of fear in her eyes. Her dad was like, it's creepy. Get the doll out. That's a creepy doll. And I'm like, but look how pretty she is. And she's so happy to be there. And they're like, nope, nope, get her out of here. I was very disappointed because I'd put a lot of you know, a lot of work into finding her and fixing her up and dressing her up. So I was, I was disappointed that they weren't as excited as I was. So I take the dress off of her, hang it in the closet. There was no way I was going to be able to just throw her in the garbage. So I took the doll and I just put her in the junk closet in the spare room and left her. Eventually, I guess I just forgot about her. One night, I'm lying in bed asleep. I leave my door open every night because every night, without fail, at some point in the night, Morgan comes and runs down the hallway to jump in bed with me. Morgan did not like to sleep alone. We have a big king-size bed. So Morgan would come and jump in the middle in between us and go back to sleep there. So it was something that I expect. So as I'm sleeping, I'm kind of waiting for it, you know. So I wake up because I can feel Morgan standing in the hallway. I open my eyes and there she is, but she's just standing by her room. So I hold my arms out to motion to her to, to come on, baby, come get in bed. And then she holds her arms out And she starts running down the hallway towards me. As she's running towards me, I realize, wait a minute, this has already happened. Morgan's already ran and got in bed with me. I turn and look to my left, and there's Morgan lying right there in bed with me, sound asleep. And then I freeze. Who's in the hallway? So I finally turn back over. And by this time, the little girl is standing in my doorway of my room. She has really dark auburn hair with long curls, beautiful, happy smile. 
But the moment she sees my face, she sees the fear, and she immediately, the light goes out in her eyes. She's sad. She has the most tearful look on her face. And I turn back and I look at Morgan again. And when I turn back to see her, the little girl is gone. So I don't know what to think. I'm lying there trying to to go through everything that just happened and what's going on. So I convince myself that it was just a dream. None of this happened. So I go back to sleep. I forget about it. I put it out of my mind because it was just a dream. So a few months go by. I'm in the hall bathroom brushing my hair. Morgan is in her room, which is directly across the hallway from the bathroom, playing with her her two little friends from the neighborhood. They come running out of her room, and they're telling me, bye, Mom, we're going outside to play. So I poke my head out of the bathroom door to tell the girls to go into the backyard to play. Don't go in the front yard to play. When I do that, I'm facing my bedroom door, and in the hallway right outside my bedroom that little girl is standing there staring at me with this sad, sad look on her face. We're staring at each other. I'm frozen. And then I hear the back door slam open and shut. And then, of course, I realize I need to go with them because they're real children. And I run past her. She's still there. She didn't dissipate into air or anything. She's still standing there as I run past her. I run to the backyard to make sure the kids are safe and playing, and then I go into the kitchen and get the house phone to call my husband to tell him what happened. And he tells me to go back and look in the hallway and see if she's still there, which I do, and and she's not. She's gone. My husband comes home, and when he comes in the door, the first thing he said to me was, where's that doll? Now, years passed, so I'm like, which doll? He said, the one that you had in Morgan's room with the dress. I was like, oh, that doll. We go to the to the spare bedroom. We open the door of that junk closet, and on top of the pile of junk is this doll with its arms held outstretched, like, toward the sky. And I don't remember putting her in there that way. It was just kind of crazy that that's the way she was lying there because that's how the little girl was running down the hallway towards me. My husband was just intent on getting that doll out of the house. Like, we got to get that doll out of here. That doll is, something's wrong with that doll. So we grab the doll, we run outside. It's garbage day, so the, the big green can is by the road. And it's full, so she's she's on top of the garbage The lid's on her, but it won't close because it's so full. Her little arms and legs are hanging out. The garbage man comes probably not 30 minutes later, gets her and takes her away. So after she's gone, then we kind of start telling people what happened. You know, we tell my sisters, we tell his mother, the neighbors, you know. We tell everyone. And then, you know, after a few weeks or so, it, it just kind of dies down and and life goes on and life goes back to normal. But a few people actually wanted me to go and talk to the people at the antique store and get more of a, a backstory on the doll. I drove by it every day because it was across the street from my house. I wanted to go and ask them if maybe there was a child that had died in their family that maybe the doll belonged to, or where did the doll come from? But I just never got up the courage. I think that the doll belonged to the family that owned that store because the daughter had asked the mother if she had anything, and she said, yes, I have a doll like that at home. Eventually, within... A couple of years, the the antique store closed. 
I wish there was some way for me to find out who owned the store at that time. I have asked around, but no one that I know knows who, who they were. So months have gone by. My sister and I take my daughter Morgan and her son to an outdoor antique flea market. And we're walking around looking at everything. It's so hot. It's the middle of summer. We're so thirsty. So we get in line at a lemonade stand to get some lemonade. As we're standing there, I just get this feeling that someone is glaring at me, like staring a hole through me. And I turned and looked at my sister, and she's looking at me with that same expression of, what's happening, someone's staring at us. And we both turn around, and behind us is an antique booth. And by the sidewalk, they have a high chair. And in that high chair, that little doll is sitting and just staring at my sister and I. This doll looked at us like, if she could come out of that high chair, she would just, she would come out of there and just give us a good whipping. She looked mad. Of course, her face hasn't changed. She's a doll, but it was more the feeling. The doll seemed angry at me. And the fact that my sister and I were both feeling it at the same time just kind of doubled it. She first said, is that the doll? And I said, yes, it is. We grab the kids run out of there as fast as we can. Everyone's staring at us, wondering why we're running, but we don't care. We don't care how silly or stupid we look. We are out of there. That's the very last time I've ever gone to any antique store, to any flea market. I won't even go to a garage sale. I, I don't buy anything secondhand. I want to know everything and every person that's been around anything I own. When I saw the little girl, I was 25 years old, so I'm kind of young. And at that time in your life, when you're that young, you know, it's just creepy. As you get older, you look back on things in a different perspective. Now, if it had happened, I would try to talk more to the little girl standing there and try to figure out what she needed, you know. This little girl obviously had some unfinished business because she was still here. I've had a lot of family members who have passed over and people in my family that are, that are still here have all talked about maybe going to a medium and seeing if anyone would come through with a message. But for me, I would like for that little girl to come through just so that her and I could have some closure so that I would know that she is okay. It would be comforting to know that, that she found her way play home. Thank you, thank you, Mary, for sharing your story with the spooked. Now, we first heard Tella Mary's story from her niece, Stephanie. And Stephanie, she's a spooked listener who knew y'all would dig it. Thank you, Stephanie. The original score for this piece was by Ella June Pearson. It was produced by Zoe Frigno. Now, if you want more spook, if you need more spook, be afraid. Spook Season 7 has risen. Available on the Luminary channel on Apple Podcasts or directly on Luminary at luminary.link slash spooked. Spook was created by the team that never fools around with old discarded dolls, not under any circumstance. Except, of course, Mark Ristich. He spends most weekends scouring yard sales. There's Davey Kim, Chris Hambrick, Leon Morimoto, Taylor DeCott, Marissa Dodge, Zoe Ferrigno, Ann Ford, Eric Gagnez, Cody Harjo, Lola Abrera, Miles Lassie, Yari Bundy, and Doug Stewart. The Spook theme song is by Pat Messini Miller. My name is Washington. 
And please know, please recall that this is not the news. No way is this the news. In fact, you could wrap up a beautiful handcrafted doll in an antique box for your little girl's Christmas present and then wake up at 3 a.m. one morning and decide, no, 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 no. She's getting a bike instead. Yeah, you can make that decision and you would still not be as far away from the news as this is, but this is P. R. X. If you run your own company, then you need Odoo. Odoo is an affordable all-in-one management software built to increase the efficiency and productivity of any business, regardless of size, budget, or industry. With Odoo's massive library of fully integrated applications, you can control every aspect of your company from anywhere at any time. So ditch that old, outdated software and get more done in less time with Odoo. For a free trial, go to odoo.com slash snap. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash snap. If you enjoyed that, get more episodes. Subscribe to the Luminary channel on Apple Podcasts or directly on Luminary.